Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more than all those who are contributing to the treasury, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she has had to live in. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Might as good to God in prayer. Gracious God, be with us this day. May we hear your word. May we put your word into practice now and always. Amen. This is the third, and some of you will be happy to know the final, sermon on our series on stewardship. It's, 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 Paul was right when he said it last week, it's a hard topic to discuss. Our theme for stewardship this year has been gifts in action. We have been learning the following. How does the way I live my life and serve my church, how is that a praiseful and thankful response to all that God has given me? In response to that statement, we have been observing the following quote from Leo Viscaglia. He says, your talent is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift back to God. Three weeks ago when we began, we learned that we use our gifts and we give back to God when we do our best for God every day. Last week we discovered that we use our gifts and we give back to God when we put God first in our lives and when we love others. Instead of just telling you the theme for today, I think I can do it with the following story. This story was in the October-November Presbyterians Today magazine. The minister was giving a sermon on total giving. When it came time to take up the offering, the plate was passed down the pew to a small boy whose name just happened to be Bobby. Imagine that, that in that magazine it just happened to be the name Bob. When the plate was held in front of him, he looked at the usher and said, could you lower the plate please? Thinking that he wanted to see how much money was in the plate, the usher held it down a bit. And Bobby said, no, I need it a little lower. The usher lowered it more, and then Bobby looked at me and said, could you just put it on the floor? The usher was shocked at his behavior, but he finally obeyed, and he put the offering plate on the floor at Bobby's feet. Bobby stepped into the plate, and he said, this is what I give to the Lord. Today's sermon focuses on giving all that we have to God. In Scripture, Jesus relates an observation about a poor widow who gave money to help others. This is one of those famous stories from the Bible. People were coming up and they were giving lots of money, but Jesus said that this woman gave more than anyone because she gave all she had. Everyone else gave from their excesses, or I guess if you put that in today's language, they gave from their disposable income. This woman gave from the money that she needed to survive. And the amount she gave was the smallest amount possible. I did a little digging into the amount that she gave, and according to what I found on the internet, the lepton, which some translations have as the Greek coin that was used, it is a name uh, of various fractional units of currency used in the Greek. The word means small or thin. And it's the value of the coin was usually the smallest available denomination of currency. The point is that the point that we usually get from the story from the time we've been small children is that the widow gave a huge amount of money even though she put in the smallest valued piece because she gave everything she had. William Barclay says that from this passage of scripture we learn three things about giving. We learn that giving must be sacrificial. It must have a recklessness to it, and our giving is about giving all to God. So let's break these things down. Arthur says that we need to give till it hurts. And my applied New Testament commentary states, the essence of giving involves sacrifice. When we give to God, we should go without something that we want or need. Now I think we make sacrifices in our giving when, it, when we 
decide to give something to someone from our hearts. That's when it becomes a sacrifice. Our giving means less if it is done out of a sense of duty or obligation. It means more if we give out of love and from a desire to help and to give back. And this applies to everything we give, our money, our time, our friendship, our faith by the deeds we do, even the possessions, the old junk we have that we give to charity. It will be more of a sacrifice if it comes from our hearts. The widow gave all she had because she gave her gift from a loving heart, and that sacrifice made her gift much more valuable. When we give to God, we give God our love. When we give God our love, it means that we love God's children. And when we love God's children, our hearts overflow with joy. Second, there needs to be a recklessness in our giving. I had a problem with that word. The widow gave all she had by putting her two coins into the poor box. You know, she could have given one coin and kept one. She could have saved and cut corners until she had two extra coins to spare. She could have played it safe and given to the church in another way. But she didn't. She gave it all, and she gave it all to God. As Christians, it is our duty to give freely to God. Too often we hold back in what we do in our faith. We hold back in our giving, in our serving, in our loving of other people. Too often we hold back from God because we, we can't be bothered. We don't have the time. We need our space. Too often we hold back from God and it is our prayer life, our Bible study time, our coming to church time, our faith journey time that pay the price. Too often we hold back from God in our confessions, in our forgiveness, in our being an example to others. And the funny thing, or the irony here, is we don't ever need to hold back anything from God. In fact, when we freely give to God, we find out that God can do things that we can't even imagine. With God, we need to let go of our fears, we need to let go of our wants, we need to let go of our control, and we need to let God take care of the rest. And that's really our third point. When we give to God, we give God are all. The widow gave from a place of love. She not only gave freely and gave away all her money, but this woman also gave God her fears, her trust, and her will. In other words, she gave, she gave God everything in her life and trusted God to take care of her. Your talent is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift back to God. God wants us to use our gifts. God wants us to do our best. God wants us to love others. God loves you, and that means that God wants every part of you. God wants the loving, the caring, and the faithful part of you. God wants the part that sins, the part that falls short, the part that fails time and time again. God wants the part that is selfish and quick-tempered and impatient. And God wants the part that is eager to learn, ready to forgive, and willing to accept. God wants that part of you that can learn and grow and move beyond your own needs and motivations. So to sum that up, because God loves you and because God will always love you, He wants all of you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, there was a young man who was very smart, very bright. He was studying medicine or pre-med at Harvard. And this young man was the definition already in his young life. He was the definition of success. Valedictorian of his high school. Top of his class in his high school, obviously. Captain of the football team. Marrying going to marry his high school sweetheart. And of course, they were king and queen of the prom. And he had the grades and the charisma and the personality and the gifts to get into Harvard. And at Harvard, he was first in his class, A's in everything. And he just finishes his sophomore year of pre-med, and he decides that the pressure's kind of getting to him. 
So he's going to take a break. So he, now this is not what I would go for a break, but I didn't write the story. So he goes to the mountains of Tibet and he goes into a monastery and he meets with a monk. And the monk, and he tells the monk everything that I've shared for you, how successful he is, how driven he is, how popular he is. There it goes. And the monk listens to his story and he says, young man, you are losing your soul. Everything to you is a competition. You have to be first. You have to be best. You have to be the most successful. You stay up all night studying, not to be a good doctor. You do it so you can get a better grade than the person next to you. You are going to marry your high school sweetheart, not because you're in love with her, but because she's the girl that everyone else wanted. Everything to you is a competition. There is no peace in your heart and it's going to ruin you. Come here, see what peace and harmony are all about. And the young man was just at that point where he was very susceptible to suggestion because he was feeling that pressure. So he calls his parents and he says, I'm sorry, I'm quitting Harvard, I'm not going to be a doctor, I'm going to stay here in Tibet and I'm going to train to be a Buddhist monk. And he hangs up. And time goes by, about five, six months, and he's doing pretty well, but he's feeling really guilty about how he left things with his parents. So he writes them a letter. He says, Dear Mom and Dad, I know you're upset by the decisions that I've made. But, and I know you don't understand, but I've got to tell you, this is the best thing that I have ever done. I found my soul. I found my inner peace. I am happy. I am content. There is no competing. There is no competition. There is no having to strive or drive. Everybody here shares and shares equally. And I have begun to recapture my soul, just as the monk said. And I'm doing really well and I'm working really hard. I'm already the number two disciple in the camp. And if I work really hard, I know I'll be number one by June, maybe even July. <coughs> this man put all he had into the wrong thing for the wrong reason. God wants all of us, everything all wrapped up in that nice neat package because God can take it and do amazing things with it. We are at the time where we are asking for time and talent and treasury in this church. What we're really asking for is we want to help you give your entire lives to God and put God first in this church, in this community, and in your lives. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with us this day. Help us, guide us, and love us for all that we do.